There's a opportunity right now with inflation and interest rates that not a lot of people are talking about. And if you know how to put it together for the right person, it could have a massive impact on what they're doing. It's really one of those things where it's like they got to take advantage soon on this strategy because we have no idea where interest rates are at. The first words that were out of your mouth when we talked recently is you're like, Caleb, I'm going to be able to help people lock in a crazy high interest rate without taking any risk. What are ways that we can create that CD like returns safety, but ultimately give you a better bang for your buck? You have to think outside the box. For fixed retirement savers, they don't want risk. They want the highest cash flow they can get. They want it for as long a period of time as they can. And then they want to give that money to their kids very economically in a simple way. Great. Well, a CD can do that for 12 months. What if we took two products right now and we don't base it on performance? When you enter retirement, it's very easy for scarcity to creep in. You have all the money you're gonna have. Now you have to live off that money and you don't know how long you're gonna live and you still wanna be abundant. I want people to hear from this, Caleb, is I'm not advocating that this is like some magic bullet or some thing that I'm pushing really heavy. I'm not at all. I don't think this is right for a lot of people, but for the right person in the right scenario in retirement, this could be the missing piece to solve for cash flow, protect their loved ones, give them peace of mind. And more importantly, and I want to get into this conversation, have them show up more powerfully. Danny, welcome back to the Bearable Show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. It's really great to be here. It's fun talking about all kinds of different topics. I know that you're super passionate about retirement. You help people all over the country maximize mm -hmm. their retirement income. You came in yep. today pumped because you helped some people recently with this new strategy that you've discovered. And what I would yep. love for you to do is like lay the foundation. I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be actively listening, which some people don't appreciate because I'm going to be interrupting you. Um, but let's just like, I want to learn and I want this channel to be a place that like makes people like increases their financial IQ. And so with that, welcome to the show. And I excited, I'm excited to like dive in. I'm wearing a college shirt. You know, I'm serious, dude. I'm super I know, serious. I know. I saw the college shirt. I'm pumped. Dude, I've been so looking forward to this forever because I love coming on this channel. I love the community. I love being a part of Better Wealth. Like what you guys are doing is really raising the bar on the conversation in the industry. You're helping so many people and it's just an honor to be a part of this. So thanks for having me on, bro. Yep. I'm fired up right now, man. I'm so excited. I'm sounding the alarm bells because there's a opportunity right now with inflation and interest rates that not a lot of people are talking about. And I've been traveling, going around different channels, and I've been just working as much as I can in my own practice and, and trying to help people to realize that there's an opportunity here and there's a really exciting thing that's going on. And if you know how to put it together for the right person, it could have a massive impact on what they're doing. So I wanted to come on the channel and share that today. Yeah, and so I just want to set the stage. So as as yeah. we're recording this, interest rates are coming down, which is great for if you're a real estate investor, if you're it, quite frankly like an investor, like that might be good news for you. But yeah. in the retirement space that you're in, um, this has been like a, a crazy blip in time that's been like, wow, like we're able to get greater money sa safely and that's been really great. And so the first words that were out of your mouth when we talked recently is you're like, Caleb, I'm going to be able to help people lock in a crazy high interest rate without taking any risk. Um, and <laughs> it's really one of those things where it's like they got to take advantage soon on this strategy because we have no idea where interest rates are at. So with that, I, I just want to set the stage of like, you know, this is not for somebody who, you know, wants to be able to earn high rates of return in the market or as a real estate investor. This is for the person that's maybe more conservative, likes mm -hmm. what happened the last year with higher interest rates and like CDs and other things. But now that yeah. that's coming back down, what are ways that we can create that, you know, CD like returns, um, safety, but ultimately yeah. give you a better bang for your buck. And I also want to just be clear, like, this is not retirement planning advice. This is not investment advice. It's not tax right. advice. This is all entertainment, and we have to say that because obviously we don't know your situation. Um, I'm just love bringing on people that are experts in different areas, and I learn a lot, and I find that our audience likes to hear different perspectives. And so, without further ado, Danny, let's let's dive in. Yeah, thanks so much, Caleb. And first of all, I want to be careful with that word rate of return, right? Because this is actually what we're doing is we're kind of building something that will mirror similar effects to somebody who wants a CD or a fixed annuity. So again, just to frame this for people so we don't waste anybody's time. We're talking directly to people this could actually bring value to and that are you're interested in this kind of education, right? It, you said it so perfectly. It's for people who want CDs at the bank or fixed annuities with an insurance company. What that means is they want to keep their principal safe. 
and they just want to get a good interest rate. They want to take that interest rate and live off of that. You know, retirement savers used to buy CDs. They could go get six, six and a half percent. They could live off the interest, keep their principal intact for their kids. You know, the bank would guarantee it. It was a great deal. And they loved it because it was safe, right? As we mature, Caleb, different phases of our life change how we think about our money and what level of risk we're comfortable with. You know, you and I, we're like ultimate risk. We got all the time in the world. We can make lots of money. We can blow it. We can make mistakes. We can grow. We can learn. And we're looking to grow exponentially. Okay. But when we age and we get closer to 60, 70, 80, we change. You know, our needs change. Our desires change. We don't want the same things. We have different priorities and different concerns. And you and I haven't even experienced what that feels like yet. So it's challenging to put ourselves in the shoes of somebody who's feeling those things because you and I have a lot of conversations about abundance and scarcity. And, you know, we try to stay in the abundance mindset so we can serve and give and, and grow our communities and help people. When you enter retirement, it's very easy for scarcity to creep in. You have all the money you're going to have. Now you have to live off that money and you don't know how long you're going to live and you still want to be abundant. You know, when we're making big money, money's flowing and it's easy to be abundant. When you're living off a of fixed income, scarcity is a real thing. And I'm on a mission to eradicate scarcity because I think it really interrupts some of the most beautiful parts of life, which is where we get to give and spend time with our families and maybe yeah. improve our communities or do the things we never got a chance to do while we were busy working. So in order to honor that and guard that, we have to think outside the box. And here's why I'm so passionate, Caleb. I've been an agent through the last 13 years. So I worked through a decade of almost zero interest rates. We talked about this last time, right? We had like a 1% account that people were excited about in 2015. That's a scary prospect. So now that interest rates have come up because inflation's come up, we're paying all the prices at the grocery store, the gas, all the stuff we don't like. But for the retirement saver, if they're not taking advantage of an opportunity right now, they could miss all the benefits of the inflation for that type of person. Now, benefits of inflation can include things for like real estate investors that we're not even going to go into. But for fixed retirement savers, there is an opportunity, but you have to be creative and you have to put two products together. So let me just tell you the story of how this was born, if I can. I had a CPA in town refer a client to me and the client was 70 years old. His wife was 69 and he had a rental property. Now, when we sat down and looked at what he was getting after his expenses, all the stuff. And again, there's a lot of great real estate investors that you've introduced me to through this channel. And they would probably laugh at this number, but again, they were self-managing. They were very kind. They didn't raise rents very much. They dealt with repairs and all this stuff. They were making about 4% on their money. Okay. As a monthly net income, that's what they were actually realizing an income from the property, but they were done. They're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Where can I go put the money? And I said, well, it's really simple. We can go and you can go get, you can go to walk into any bank in America and go get 4% on your money. I mean, you can get a CD for 12 months, but what happens after 12 months? We got to get a new CD. And what happens if interest rates go down? Now you enter the race to the bottom. So now if we get into a declining interest rate environment and we don't know what's going to happen with interest rates, I have no idea. And they were anti, they didn't want to put their money in equities. No, they were at a point where they're like, look, we don't want risk. I don't care okay. what the return is. Right. And I wasn't trying to pitch them anything with risk. I was just asking them, how do you feel about risk? And they said, we don't want it. It would cause us sleepless nights. It's okay. it just yeah. don't care what the return is not for me. Okay. That's fine. I'm not going to try to convince anybody. Why would I do that? So I said, okay, well, it's real simple. You can go get a bank CD, pays 4%. You could get a fixed annuity. It also pays 4%. You can get a little longer term. Okay, but is that a long-term solution? Is that the best thing for their situation? I said, what if we got a little creative here? And I said, let me just ask you a couple more questions. Okay, you want the highest income for you, but why the CD? Do you need the money? No, no, we have plenty of other liquidity. Okay, so what's the purpose of keeping the principal there? Well, we have two kids and we'd really like them to receive that money. That's very important to us. Okay, now we got the stage debt. I understand what their needs are and their priorities. They don't want risk. They want the highest cash flow they can get. They want it for as long a period of time as they can. And then they want to give that money to their kids very economically in a simple way. Great. Well, a CD can do that for 12 months, but now we need to enter into a new scenario. So I said, what if we took two products right now and we don't base it on performance? What if we just look at what the insurance company is willing to give you as a guarantee? And here's what we did. Okay. They had 400,000 net from the sale of this property. Okay. What we did was we split it into two different vehicles. One of the vehicles was a joint lifetime income annuity. What that is, is a product that you can put money into. 
it's going to provide you a payment for the rest of your life and your spouse's life. And even if the run money runs out, the payment will still come. Now, at the payout rate that they were at, which was high, they're going to run out of money fairly soon. Okay, so that doesn't honor their second goal of wanting to leave the principal in place. But we only put 300,000 into the joint lifetime income annuity. And what we did was we deferred it for three years until what was his RMD age. Now, it wasn't an IRA, so there's no relevance there to the RMD age. That's just what he wanted to defer to until he needed the income. So we deferred it till 73. That 300,000 from that insurance company was going to guarantee him and his wife 32 grand a year for as long as they live. Okay. But they still have another 100,000 from the sale. So what did we do with that? Well, what I did was I divided it into 10 payments and we purchased a guaranteed joint survivorship life contract. And what that means is we're able to pick an age that if we put in 10 payments at the right time for 10 years, the insurance company will guarantee it to their age 120, a tax-free death benefit of guess what? 400,000. So what do you end up with, Caleb? You don't end up with the liquidity of a CD. I want to be clear. And this is not a rate of return. Okay. But what did they end up with as their net effect? They ended up with $32,000 of income a year off 400 grand. And when they pass, that entire 400 grand will be transferred back to their family tax free. And if you do the math of what is 32,000 divided by their 400 they put into the entire strategy, that is 8%. Now, that's not a rate of return. That is a distribution. It's an eight percent distribution of their total amount of contribution that they put towards the strategy. But they were very happy, and their kids were very happy because instead of trying to go out and buy products and be at the mercy of interest rate risk, they were able right. to say, "Hey, you know what? We love that. Let's lock it in. Let's make sure my wife's protected." And then we have this. Basically, it's not paid up because it's universal life, but essentially, the company's guaranteeing that you make the ten payments and it'll be there till one twenty. So. I mean, you can yeah. call that whatever you want. It's not paid up, but essentially what they got was exactly what they came in for in a different way. But we were able to boost cash flow substantially instead of only giving them a 4% off the top. Now they can take 8% distribution and make sure their kids get that money. And I think that's special. I'm excited about it. And I don't think enough people are really talking about it when you really can get creative. And that's just one example. Yeah. And when you're, when you're talking 8%, you're using 8% of the 400,000. And and we are we do need to factor that we're we're going three years, but you're essentially giving them in this scenario, you're locking in that they're gonna be able to pass on their money most efficiently to their kids. Yeah. And they're able to spend a lot more throughout their life versus the scenario number one would be like try to find a product that we just spend the interest off of. And so, you know, and and four percent if they if they wanted to give their money their principal back 4% might be the number today but as interest rates continue to come down if they really want to if they really want their principal to pass on to their kids there may be a world yeah. where they're now going to only be able to spend 1 or 2% if they don't want to take that risk so i just want to like just you know, i'm just trying ago. to i'm just, in my in my painting the picture pro, like it's it's one of those 100%. things where the the negative to this this scenario is their you took their 400,000, you gave them the, this, and they don't have liquidity of that 400 anymore. Whereas yes. like if it, their money was in a CD or whatnot, they're getting a lot less, but their money yeah. is available. But it sounds like in their scenario, it wasn't the only money that they had. They had right. money other places. So you're able to maximize the legacy and also spending. I have a couple other questions, but I want to just pass the mic back over to you. Thank you. What I was saying was, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We're not that far off of 2% interest rates. That was just yep. a few years ago. I mean, so it's very recent. That's why I'm like excited. I'm like, where did this come from? Like when I ran yep. this and I'm like, no way. Like that, think about that leverage. Yep. A 70, almost 70 year old couple can put a hundred grand into a joint survivorship. I'm not joint survivorship, universal life policy and get 400,000. Okay. That's four yep. times leverage in your seven. That's crazy. Yeah. So yep. like, that's a really exciting thing. And so when you can put this together, what you find is exactly what you said. The downside and the negative to this is it's a commitment. I mean, they're not, if you cash out that annuity and you give up that life policy, you know, you're out that premium that's gone and there's a surrender charge on the annuity. 
Okay. But again, that's why it's so important to stick to our process, which is we do a really, really thorough job of many meetings with people to understand what is their total needs look like? What is their complete situation? But then how can we maximize these little outliers that are important to them, these priorities that they have? And we say, okay, we know you're not going to need this liquidity. You have more liquidity than it's even in the strategy. But if you right. wanted to try to compete against a CD or an investment property, which again, I'm not competing against the investment property, that's gone. But let's say you, you want to compete against a bank CD or a fixed annuity. Is there something that could get you more cash flow? And here's what I love. It's about return on result. You taught me this. Okay. Yep. What's the difference in that 16 grand for that family? Is that a family cruise they get to take every year with their family? Is that college yep. funding for one of their grandkids when they get in and they need room and board? I mean, it's amazing what you could do with an extra 16 grand. And that's really the difference in what they were looking at from a guaranteed payout from the annuity versus mm -hmm. the interest rate on a CD or, well, or a fixed annuity. I want to play a couple scenarios. So please, the $32,000 that you're giving them from this annuity. Yeah. I know granted it's three years from there. They have mm -hmm. a 400,000. Yeah. At, with the 4% rule, for those of you listening, 4% rule, it's essentially taking out 4% mm -hmm. of your balance and you can increase for inflation if you'd like. And the idea would be that your money would at least be able to last for 30 years. I'm using that principle right now to compare like a typical distribution strategy. You would need $800,000 in an account <laughs> yeah. to, with a 4% rule to produce 32,000. So I just want right. to put that in perspective of like, again, um, Again, you're 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 taking um, four hundred thousand, and you're creating a joint universal life. Which, is, again, for those of you listening or watching, is two people. You know, it, you, two people need to qualify, which makes it a little bit easier to get underwritten. Because for the insurance company, it's not just one person that needs to die; it's both. So there, right. it's point. quote unquote better for them. It allows you to be able to get more of that leverage because one of those. One of those individuals probably would have to spend a lot more to get that yeah. 400000 But the whole goal is they wanted to pass on their kids. It wasn't one of those that, you know, and because the annuity was joint, meaning if one of them died, they're still getting the income. So it's really you're accomplishing, you know, best best of both worlds. I would be curious, and I don't know if you ran this, if you did a single one, if you did a single annuity and a single death benefit, yeah. on one if what the numbers would look if they would be any different in this scenario um Caleb, just be I, love, I love that you went there because that's where i was going with this next so first of all david uh, our we, we didn't david talk McKay, about this by the way this is not scripted this is <laughs> so no I can, no, no yeah. i literally was going there next like and i'm fired up about it so i apologize for interrupting i'm just excited dude yep. i gotta i gotta let everybody know so our friend dave mcknight wrote a great book about this tax-free income for life right exactly what you said it's a very expensive prospect to try to get 800 grand to create 32,000. If you can get 400 grand to create 32,000, you're boosting your cash flow in retirement, okay? But again, there's a sec there's another part to that, right? What about the kids? What if your priority is different than just maximizing cash flow for you? What if you have a legacy need? That's where this comes into play. And what's so exciting about it is where I where I where I made a mistake was I went on um, Life 180 about a month ago. And I was like, hey, this is this cool strategy and I'm so excited about it. And when I first built it, what I was doing was I was trying to start the annuity within 30 days, peel off some income and buy the life insurance policy as a life pay. And what that did was that lowered the payout to about 7% of the total money. What I found was when we're able to be intentional with our clients and find out what is the cash flow for? Well, I got some other liquidity I could use as kind of like a bridge for three years. Let's let this pump up a little bit. Great. Now, if we can mix a combination of deferral or single end joint life, you can create different outcomes. So where this strategy really is amazing is when you can mix it and start to blend. So for example, some people might say, well, shoot, I wasn't expecting 32,000 or I don't even want that much, right? I don't need it. Well, maybe we could put more into the life policy. And instead of just replacing the money you put in, what if you could double the money you put in for the kids? What if that was your priority? Or what if you said, hey, you know what? The kids are going to get all this other stuff. They don't need to get 100% of it. What if we cut it down to 50% and boost cash flow for us? Well, now you can get an even higher amount of cash flow. 
Or what if you said, I don't need the income in three years, I could go seven years. You can, you can work with this. And what our team does is we build models for people where we say, look, let's just figure out what it is you want to have happen. And then we yeah. can go to the insurance company and get them to give us the guarantees that they'll provide that it'll happen. And so it's really fun when you get to sit and customize it because then you can build whatever you want. Yeah. What I'm, did you run in this scenario if they won, if you did a single pay, not joint pay, single pay annuity, and then a single, you know, guaranteed life, same 10 pay, like what the number difference would be? I didn't for this scenario, but I'll tell you another one that I ran, which is really cool. So let me give you another scenario that I got. Okay. I had a guy who is 52. Okay. okay. He's got a wife who's 42. And okay. he tells me, he says, look, <clears throat> I don't need this money till I'm 65. I just need to let it build. And then I want to replace this money for my spouse. Okay. So remember, he's 52. She's 42. They don't want to touch it till he's 65 years old at retirement age. That's 13 years. Okay. So what we're able to do is we're able to put, okay, in this scenario, and I wrote down the numbers, so I'd have it ready with me. And it's, these are rough numbers. It's not like illustrations or anything, but just as an example, he had it roughly around 500,000 to put into the annuity. He had another okay. hundred thousand to put over here, but he had 500,000 he could put into the annuity instead of building it separately. Like I did, I took the whole 600,000 and put it into the annuity. Okay. Now again, he's got lots of other money and other things. This is not all of his money. We would never do that. This is just a portion of, and actually for him, a small portion. So we put 600,000 in the annuity. Okay. And we let that defer for 13 years and a guaranteed payment 13 years later for him on a single life was approximately $80,000. Okay. Single, single life annuity. I know that the, these terms annuity. can be confusing. Okay. So, so you're yeah, saying single 80, life annuity. Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand dollars. Eighty thousand. Okay. okay. So just think about that on its own. Okay. Just, if you had, you need, you need grand, just, just yeah, you need two million dollars in an account at the four percent rule to so just right. just to give perspective of like now again yeah. we're 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 uh, we're saying thirteen years from now. Sure. So uh, while you're talking, I'm going to do a future value calculator of Please what do. you would have to earn. So yeah. Please do. So so thirteen years later. Okay, that payment's going to be approximately $80,000. Now, what's cool about that is we're able to get a large amount of cash flow, like you just mentioned, from a contribution. And the company is going to say, hey, this is from us guaranteed. I'm not relying on indexing or performance. This is what the company is saying they're willing to guarantee as a payment if he waits 13 years. Cool. But what's the problem with that? Well, his wife's only 55. And that annuity is going to be out of money really quick. You take 80,000 divided by basically 600,000. There was some growth in there, but whatever. Just say it's, you know, just, just assume there's not that much growth. There's not going to be any money left for her. If he passes away early, she's in real trouble. And just, so, just be clear, just be clear. It's not that the, he would be able to get 80,000 for the rest of his life. Right. But then the fact that he's 10 years older, the, when he dies, that, yes. that's gone. And, 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 and again, if he, died, if he died, let's say, really early, there may be some money that could be, but like most likely, you know, if he's, if he's 75 or 80 passes away. Yep. Um, so yep. I just want to be clear about like, about yep. that. So continue. Please. So here's the cool part, Caleb, right? So everybody would go, well, Daniel, that's crazy. Like she's 55 years old. He's going to be out of money. And like, what, what is that? 11 years, 12 years. I mean, it's like, if yep. he were to pass away in his mid seventies, what, what risk we've now created for her? But here's what's crazy. Let's say we peel off seven grand and put it in a life pay GUL. GUL stands for guaranteed universal life. Okay. No cash value in this policy. It is literally you make a payment and you're guaranteed from the company a death benefit to age 120. That's it. There's no cash value. But that 7,000 a year as a life pay starting at age 52, okay, gives him a death benefit of. $600,000. So now he can create income and cash flow. And again, he had the 7,000. People are going to say, well, he put in 7,000 for 13 years. Where did that money come from? He had it. Okay. We, we yep. built that. And then and after the 13 years, he's paying that out of the annuity. Uh, out of the annuity. And by the way, the first payment basically pays him back. <laughs> I mean, after yeah. two years, he's paid himself back all his money he put in. So, okay, great. He, he maybe he deferred another year and a half in that case, but what I'm saying is if you take seven grand and put it in a GUL on him now at age 52, it creates 
600,000 of death benefits. So when he retires at 65, if he lives 30 years or 10 years, he's yeah. going to get 80 grand out of that annuity. And then the entire 600 grand is going to now kick in for the spouse and she can start income for the rest of her life. So what I want people to hear from this, Caleb, is I'm not advocating that this is like some magic bullet or some really thing that like some thing that I'm pushing really heavy. I'm not at all. I don't think this is right for a lot of people. But for the right person in the right scenario in retirement, this could be the missing piece to solve for cash flow, protect their loved ones, give them peace of mind. And more importantly, and I want to get into this conversation, have them show up more powerfully. Like, dude, it's the saddest thing to me in the world that there's a prospect of people underspending because there's an amazing book and I've been recommending it to everybody. It's called Die With Zero. I don't know if you read it. This book, no way. Don't, don't tease me. You have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I strongly encourage everybody who listens to your channel and wants to live more intentionally to read this book. It changed the way I think about retirement and cash flow. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you how proud I am this year. This has by far been my most successful year and not because of the money I've made or production. It's because I've had clients texting me after reading this book. One of them's taking their family, their entire extended family on a cruise. One of them is buying the car they always wanted to buy and they can't afford it. They just never gave themselves permission. They were scared to yeah. buy it when they totally could afford it. Like, and again, it's not about material things. It's about just being able to remove fear and scarcity yep. and being able to share this wealth with people while you can. Yep. Danny, I, I love this. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this a step further okay. because the, the thing that allows us to do these strategies is yeah. actually the permanent death benefit. Because in scenario number one, we had a joint lifetime payout annuity and mm -hmm. a joint guaranteed universal life policy. And so what that allowed this, these people to do is they, they foregone liquidity, but they got to secure the, the, the principle that they're going to pass on to their kids and yeah. take out that income. And maybe if they read, you know, die with zero, maybe that $32,000 that that's producing is able to do some fun things with family. Okay. Scenario number two, same concept. They take a chunk of money. Instead of doing the 10 pay guaranteed life, they they put all that money in a deferred annuity. It paid out eighty thousand dollars. So they took you took six hundred thousand dollars and thirteen mm -hmm. years from now you get a guaranteed eighty thousand that pays out every single year until the day that you die. And yeah. at the same time, setting up a six hundred thousand dollar guaranteed death benefit from day one to ensure that if something happens to you, um, mm -hmm. like you're, you're covering that. And so those yeah. are two scenarios of people that value more guaranteed and safety. Is that correct? Like these people are like, Hey, we're able to accomplish all this without taking any risk, which is that's, that's, that's something amazing to say. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. They, they're able to get predictable results that they can secure without taking risk on their right. principal. And that's what they're- So hear me for. out here. That's awesome. Okay. For the person that is like, and by the way, this person would need to earn eight point or 9.8%. The second person would need to earn 9.8% every single year on their original 600,000 to have a future value of over 200, 2 million, which at 4% wow. would produce 80. So just, just so it's possible, but but you could easily yeah. say like, hey, someone watching watching this could be like, yeah, I totally feel like I could, make that great don't do the annuity oh, it but if yeah, you're like sure. no i don't want i like that that would put a lot of stress on me i then yeah. like the annuity guarantees i'm not saying i'm not saying you're saying this but it it it, it it's like you're earning 9.8 percent, assuming that you're going to do the four percent rule 13 years from now all all i'm saying is you can with permanent life insurance this is what i'm trying to say with permanent life okay. insurance it gives you other options and whether you're someone like we're talking to with Danny today on like people that he's been able to help of people that want to be a little bit more conservative, helping them like unlock their cash flow to live more intentionally. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You might be someone that like is high risk, someone that wants to swing for the fences in business, someone that wants to like go that extra mile. Yeah. By the way, the death benefit is the the same solution that allows you to be able to try to hit a home run and and ensure that even if you strike out you're not yeah. starting over. So it's just that like the concept of permanent life insurance, when you look at it holistically, when you understand mm -hmm. the different benefits 
uh, that it can bring to your financial life. Like that's why I love talking about this kind of stuff because my hope is regardless, whoever's listening to this, and maybe there's a lot of advisors or people that work with people and their money, we have to help people understand that yeah. you're, you're, you have to look at the different jobs that you're giving your dollar in your portfolio. If you can give your doll jobs, dollars, different jobs or leverage those jobs, those, those small dollars might be able to act as bigger dollars in other areas of your life. And that's the example, real life example, by the way, that you've articulated, but it, the principle or ripple effect should improve everyone's financial IQ and, and what you just explained. Yeah. And thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. And it's, it's just exciting. Like it's not about trying to say, well, this is better than that, or this is the best, or this is good, and the other one's bad, right? Everybody's different. Like you said, there's people who are like, 9.1%, I'm making 12%. I'm That's awesome. Like, you should do that, right? Like, that's amazing. If you can do that, do that. This is for somebody who says, I don't know if I can do that, but I love the idea that I could just guarantee it with an insurance company. Like, they'll yeah. give me a piece of paper in writing that says, this will happen. And if you yeah. want that, this may be suitable, but here's what's really cool, Caleb. It's about creating options. Like the reason I wrote my first book is I'm obsessed with finding that edge. Like if there's anything that gives my clients a competitive advantage, I'm going to want to know about it and share it with them proactively and be the person right. that brings it to their life. Right. And so if you have someone who's like, well, I'm not that swing for the fences. I'm not comfortable with risk. I don't know if I could earn that kind of money. What's my default, right? They default to the conventional options, CDs yep. and fixed annuities. Yep. Well, this creates another option, right? It gives them the potential to say, hey, I want more cash flow. And then yep. think about from their kid's perspective, like their kids are sitting there going, mom, dad, we don't want the money. Spend the money. Enjoy it for yourself. They can't do that. Behaviorally, yep. they've saved that money their whole life. They're not just going to go spend the money. Yeah. But now if you say, hey, you know what? You're going to get a $32,000 paycheck every year for the rest of your life, no matter what happens. And yep. all that money is going to go to your kids when you're done. What are you yep. going to do with it? You could spend yep. the whole 32 grand every year yep. and another 32 grand's coming. And and I'm I'm telling you, there's gonna be more and more studies that come out that talk about the psychology of you know of annuities and like how you actually will live longer. There's already studies out there of like people will live longer when they're not in mm -hmm. scarcity of like I'm you know, because you might not think that affects your health, but it does. Like the fear oh. of running out of money yeah. or not being being a burden on your kids, like that's a real thing. And there's, there's something to say, like people can have debates all day long, like, oh, mathematically, you'd be better off putting all your money in equities and having one year of liquidity. I literally had a conversation with someone very bright, probably going to bring yeah. them on the channel. That was the cool. pitch. And I was like, great. That's, that's awesome yeah. for someone who's like obsessed and like has a channel that helps people like, great. But like, yeah. put people in real life in that, right. like, what's their life expectancy going to be, <laughs> you know? And, and so it's like, every scenario is a little yes. bit different. And, uh, Everybody's I think he's different. I think it's, it's fun to chat with you, but the more, but the message I want, I would just want to share with our audience. Cause I want to be as practical as possible is yeah. as interest rates come down, if you are mm -hmm. sitting on a chunk of money that you might think I might want to figure out is an annuity, a potential play for part of my assets. It might be super beneficial for you to talk to someone. Danny will include your link if they want to reach out to you. Um, True. because at the end of the day, as interest rates come down, there'll always be a play annuities made sense three or four years ago, but they're better now because of where interest rates are at. And so my, my only, my only encouragement would be if you're watching this and you're like someone who, who's just like thinking you're better off at least talking to somebody, whether that's yeah. Danny or somebody else that can help you understand the scenario, but just make sure that when you're talking to somebody, you're not just looking at one piece you're not just looking at what it does an annuity look like or what does an insurance product look like or what does blank look like hopefully you can talk to someone that can take your look at your scenario and and look at the different buckets and how can each bucket enhance each other by just that being a part of your portfolio and hopefully that was the big takeaway is like insurance and annuities put together really really powerful one two punch they give you another option. I want to close with two personal things if I can. Yep. Number one, my grandfather, who I'm named after, the original Dan Ronberg, passed away when I was very young. One of my only memories I have of him is the family cruise that he took our entire family on when I was five years old. I still remember that cruise. I still remember having dinner with him at the table. I still remember going up to the captain's. Th like, 
it's, it's legacy. Like these things create memories that are very powerful for your family. And so it's important that we help our communities to realize that we need to give them permission to spend because you can't take it with you. Like the purpose of, I, I don't believe the purpose of being on this earth is to die with a bunch of money in a bank account. To me, that's just hours I traded for time that it just got wasted. It wasn't intentional. Like, why did I do that? Right. And I'm not saying I want to actually die with no dollars. Right. But what I'm saying is like, I think that there's a conversation there. And I think we could have a better conversation with a lot of people who are just on default autopilot, putting money in banks, putting money over here, not really thinking about it. And, and that's important. The other thing I want to leave you with is let's be objective for a second and take the annuity out of it. OK, I went to my dad's retiring at the end of next year. Him and I are sitting down. My mom and my dad love to travel. Nice trips every year, three, two, you know, two, three trips around the world. They love it. Right. Well, he's going to retire. OK, he's not going to make the same income he's making running a large business. So I said, Dad, what are you going to do? Well, he's got all this equity in his house. And I said, Dad, we, none of us are going to come live in your house when you guys are gone. Like you have this huge amount of equity. What are you doing with that? And he's like, you know, it's just my equity. I'm going to leave it to you guys, right? And I'm like, well, none of us are going to live. We're going to sell the house and split it three ways, right? That, that's not something that we're like counting on is your equity from your home. I said, but you and mom love to travel. There's a little bit of an age difference between my mom and my dad. I said, you got, you know, he's going to be turning 70 next year. I said, you got a, like a few really, really good years, maybe 10 like great years where you could travel with mom. I said, come on, we're in the business. Why don't you guys go buy a survivorship life policy, take out a $300,000 heckum on the house, go take mom on three killer trips a year and still leave the kids the same money for pennies on the dollar. And he's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I never thought of it like that, right? So it goes to your point, Caleb, of having that death benefit gives you other options that you don't have. I love it, dude. I love it. Um, besides the link down below, is there any other way that people can get in touch with you? I have a channel and I just want to say thanks so much for all your support. We just hit a thousand subscribers. I'm really pumped about that. And it was it was at your event two, uh, three years ago where I stood up and they were like, give us a commitment. And I'm like, I'm going to be consistent on YouTube for the first right. time. And we're at a thousand subscribers, man. That's all credit to you, your team, my team. It's just been awesome to work with you guys. And, and we are very well versed in this. And our promise to everybody that wants to reach out is we're not trying to sell you anything. Like I'll come have yeah. a great conversation. I want to be the person that's injecting as much value into what you're doing as possible. And so if you want to have a conversation with me, yeah. my team, you want to run scenarios, we're happy to build you whatever you want. And there's no charge and we're, we're honored to do it. Danny, the first, first thousand subscribers is the hardest. And so thank you. Wish you the wish you the absolute best. I'm really proud of your consistency. I wouldn't have you on ongoing if I if I didn't like and trust you. And so I'm hoping you. if you're watching this and you're like I I want to learn more, reach out to Danny and his team. And um, Danny, thank you. And I'm um, looking forward to having you back on. And would love to do yeah. case studies and continue to be like the person that gives people different ways to think. Because my yeah. belief is more options is better than less options because we don't know what the future holds. And I could get, we could go down the whole prepper route. There's recently, I'm like, I'm talking to my wife about that. What if this scenario happens, this scenario? And, and at the end of the day, it comes down to more options is better than less. Regardless of what you think is the future, I want more options versus less. And I think that's a really good mentality, just looking in the future. Make sure you're setting yourself up to give you as many options as possible. And um, I'm excited to talk about more scenarios. And if you're watching this and have questions about like, hey, I wonder about this, please leave a comment. I know Danny yeah. will read every single comment. I'll read every single comment For under sure. this video. And it also helps us come up with different content ideas. And so yeah. uh, please do that. Over 50% of people that watch our channel do not subscribe to this channel. Uh, and so if you're one of those and you appreciate, if you've watched to the end, like please take a few minutes, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment um, sharing your biggest takeaway. It really encourages us and, and helps remind us why we do what we do. Yeah. And Caleb, if I can just throw one last thing in here, because I've had so much fun interacting with the Better Wealth community and I'm part of the Better Wealth community. Like, you know, and so, you know, before everybody starts commenting, I want to just leave with one thing. Please don't get married to the numbers, right? Like these are just examples yeah. that I kind of like put together. It's not about the numbers, it's about the possibilities. Like there's things that are available to you that, you know, that, that, you know, you may not have access to right now. And that's what gets fun is like, what's out there? What could we find that could do something really meaningful that could have a powerful result? And that's what we're after yeah. is helping people, you know, with where they're at. I love it.